All right, let's get further details on this now. The leader of uh, the Triple C, Nelson Chamisa's press briefing being disrupted uh, this morning. Those are reports coming out of Zimbabwe. Not clear at this particular stage uh, who were the people disrupting the briefing. Uh, this, of course, coming at a time where tensions uh, in Zimbabwe are escalating following the elections there. SABC News International editor Sophie Mukwena uh, perhaps will be able to shed some light on uh, what uh, we're hearing. Ms. Sophie, good morning to you. Thanks indeed for your time. So Chamisa was uh, due to address that uh, press briefing. Tell us what happened. Do we have any more details of what transpired there? The spokesperson and the team of the Triple C was about to address the briefing. They had started when a group of people came and disrupted the press briefing. You know that when you look at what the SADC mission spoke about in their report yesterday, they spoke about a group of people who are moving around different areas in Zimbabwe who have been disrupting uh, the opposition, but also intimidating voters. It is not clear who is in charge of this group. But yesterday, when the spokesperson of the ZANU-PF addressed the media, he spoke about how the observers single out a particular NGO and saying that uh, it was disrupting and it was intimidating people, but protecting others. Therefore, it brings to question whether touching on that, are they behind this group? Because it is difficult for us to identify exactly who are these people. But as we speak, I've been in constant communication with our correspondent in Zimbabwe. As we speak, I'm sure you can beam that feed now just to show the viewers that uh, we are trying to bring that pressure that has started uh, on the screens, but we have challenges now with the link and the technology. So if you, you can look at that feed, you will see that uh, it's freezing. They are there addressing the media, but now we have challenges with, uh, with, uh, with the feed and the link. But the presser is currently underway. After the presser, our team will be able to send yeah. the stuff and we will be able then to speak with our correspondent yeah. to give us proper information because he is on the scene, yeah. but now he can't talk because he's recording Criselda. Ms. Sophie, how does this fare in the run-up, of course, to whatever final election result uh, will be uh, announced uh, whenever it is? Because already tensions are high at this particular stage. Uh, we've already played those clips where the various observer missions had spoken about what they were dissatisfied with in terms of the election, the issue of the ballot papers that uh, were not uh, you know, transported to the relevant uh, places on time, the Triple C now, a media briefing being, uh, you know, being disrupted, uh, where I'm sure those are some of the concerns that they were going to raise in addition with other things perhaps that they felt were not okay in terms of the election. How does this fare for the tensions that we're now seeing in the run-up to an announcement of uh, whatever election results will be announced. Christelda, you were there during the last election. You know that when President Nangagwa came into power, and at that time, ZANU PF and the incoming leader of the country then, who was a candidate for ZANU PF, had promised that going forward, they are going to ensure that there's transparency, there's democracy institutions of governance that are independent will dispense their responsibilities with uh, impartiality. Now you have a situation where that is found wanting. Let mm. us be clear. The people who run elections are electoral bodies in any country. Mm. And therefore the criticism is not directed at zanu -PS. It is directed at ZEC, that is found one thing. But unfortunately, you find a situation where the political parties now are defending ZEC. Now the question is, are they 
working with Zek. And I think that's where the problem is. Now you have the opposition coming in, defending the, the observers, and therefore tension is very high. And uh, clearly now the outcome of the results, that announcement, when it's made mm. by Zek, mm. I can guarantee you one group is not going to be happy because already they are now interfering or responding to yeah. what Zek is supposed to respond to or answer. Because the observers are talking about Zek. No one spoke about ZANU-PF. They are just talking about Zek. They are not even talking about the government. And therefore, Zek was supposed to respond. Now, when you have parties responding, defending Zek, then you have opposition uh, responding, defending the observers. Yeah. Clearly, the tension is now high. Yeah. I don't really want to jump the gun, but of course, we could likely see the possibility of the legitimacy of this election being questioned on whatever outcome, I guess, uh, would be announced, whoever the aggrieved party, I guess, would be uh, following the announcement. Are we likely to see possible court action? Because you could already see the unhappiness, uh, you know, uh, from certain quarters with regard to how the election was run. And one of the issues that we spoke about and all those observers had touched on was the issue of the ballot papers not reaching on time, which could question whether Zimbabweans were given adequate or even fair chance to exercise their right to choose whosoever they wanted. If any party takes the report of such as observers to court, they are likely going to win because Sadek is clear there was a mess in relation to Zek. They even went as far as saying the election material didn't arrive on time, particularly in Harare and Bulawayo. Who has got strong support in Harare and Bulawayo? It's the opposition. Already we saw the official results from Bulawayo mm -hmm. that the opposition has won 12 majority see, which speaks to the fact that this is the opposition stronghold. We know previously Harare was the opposition stronghold. We don't know now. We will see with the results. Therefore, the electoral body of SADC says that can lead to voters not going to vote, all of them, or find time. Because some of them have to drive there for it at night. Now they are scared to go back to the polling station when the material arrives. It's been the extension of voting as it was done in areas by the president with that proclamation. The issue is if you are in Bulawayo and it's your voting station that didn't have material, you work in Harare. You are going to travel back to Harare, you are not going to vote. So even the extension, much as it did help, but still it did uh, derive others to exercise their vote. And therefore, sometimes it isn't, when you find that kind of commotion, then it isn't intimidation indirectly because people will be scared to go and vote at night. And therefore, the report of uh, the observers, particularly EU, SADC, and remember, SADC is the regional body. They are the main people that everybody must take you from. Then it's like this. You can use it in court. And therefore, whoever is aggrieved, whoever can use that report or the report of the observers to challenge this in court. But it will depend whether the judiciary will be independent enough to make a ruling. We saw what happened yeah. to what the elections with some of the court cases.